I've done a fair bit of content on the channel about headphones, headsets, and earphones. I think I have a fair bit of experience in this field, having been a DJ for quite a long time and doing some small time music production on the side. But for someone who professes to have a pretty good grasp on what it means to have a quality audio experience, I've been remarkably okay with the same Logitech 2.1 audio solution for the past 11 years. But when Sound Blaster offered to send over their Katana Gaming soundbar, it gave me the perfect opportunity to ditch my old speakers and try out something new. Need a new home for your system? Check out the new Enermax Sabre, an interchangeable front panel lets you choose between airflow or all show, while the spacious interior layout gives maximum flexibility and the option to mount a radiator on the back wall so you can show off your lighting. The top mounted IO features a convenient and easy way to change up the coloring on the vibrant RGB strips that span the entire exterior, and the PSU shroud and included lighting and fan control hub keep you in command. Check out the Sabre Ray at the link below. To be fair, my Logitech 2.1 surround system served me really well for a long period of time, honestly far longer than I originally anticipated. However, the subwoofer was fairly large and awkward, and the satellite speakers were kind of oddly positioned around and behind my ever-expanding monitor. When I switched over to a 34-inch ultra-wide, my old speaker placement was actually behind the monitor housing completely. While they still sounded good, I was just kind of ready for something maybe a little more modern. Soundbars have obviously been around for quite a while, and in fact, I have them in several rooms of my house, including right over there. They make for a great sounding, practical audio solution without being overly intrusive visually. Not to mention that they don't require a ton of floor or rack space like a traditional amp and speaker setup might. Of course, PC audio is slightly different, but given that monitors now are the size of small TVs, I'm surprised the PC soundbar design space hasn't been more thoroughly explored. Well, leave it to Sound Blaster, the pioneers of PC audio, to bring something like this to market. I remember building my first PC back in the 90s and having to remember to include a Sound Blaster sound card if I wanted my MP3s and Winamp to sound good. They've been at this game longer than basically anyone and their dedication to PC audio shows. The Sound Blaster X Katana isn't cheap, coming in at $250. But for your money, you get honestly a really immersive audio experience, especially if you're into PC gaming. The Katana comes in two main parts, the single speaker ported subwoofer enclosure and the four speaker bar itself. The subwoofer is actually a pretty nice form factor, fairly slim and light, and replacing my old subwoofer with this resulted in quite the improvement in under desk legroom. The cabinet is made of MDF and the port tube is a glossy plastic. And underneath the fabric mesh on this side is a five and a quarter inch woofer. This won't rattle your bones, but it fills out the low end really nicely and the sound is clean. In fact, I'd venture to say that unless you're gaming in some kind of enormous room or have the sub positioned firing down into the carpet for some reason, this should give you more than enough punch for most applications. The sound bar houses four total speakers, two up firing mid-range drivers and two forward facing tweeters. Again, these produce a really distortion-free, clean and clear sound profile while being plenty loud. In fact, during my few months with the Katana, I've only ever had it turned up at most halfway. The 75 watts of power was definitely way more than I needed in my 12 by 12 office and likely could fill a much larger room if you wanted. The only issue is that because the tweeters are positioned directly firing forward and close to your face, highs tend to be overly pronounced at times and I had to turn up the woofer to compensate. As a result, the soundstage didn't feel particularly wide. It's more akin to listening to closed back headphones like really, really loud closed back headphones. I think my biggest gripe about the Katana comes up when discussing these mid-range drivers. They fire directly up. And as this bar is meant to be positioned directly below your monitor, that means that the sound can potentially reflect off of the screen surface. Maybe it was how I had the Katana set up, or maybe it was because of my monitor's curve, or maybe it was because of the angle I have the monitor positioned. 
And in fact, maybe it was a combination of all three. But I could hear a very faint amount of echo when I cranked up the volume. For most people, and for most listening situations, this probably would not be a problem at all, and in fact, you might not even notice it. But when I'm sitting down editing a video where echo and reverb are evil incarnate, I often had to switch over to headphones to get a more accurate representation of what the audio track actually sounded like. But luckily that's not what the Katana is meant for and marketed towards, and its looks fit right into the gamer aesthetic. It has a premium looking brushed aluminum top plate with a really attractive beveled edge. And at a height of about six centimeters, it can tuck right in below even the lowest monitors without obscuring any of the screen. The front is protected by a black metal mesh. And if you look close enough, you can see the tweeters positioned at either end. The top panel has a Sound Blaster logo nameplate along with five buttons. And I found operation and control of the Katana to be simple, straightforward, and relatively intuitive. I might even go so far as to wish I had a bit more control over the audio profiles as the SBX button right over here lets you cycle through some presets, but doesn't give you full EQ autonomy. The other buttons up top are again, pretty self-explanatory. There's a power button to the left, volume up and down, and then a button that lets you cycle through input sources. This is one of the best parts of the Katana. It has five available inputs, so you can not only use it for your PC, but also as a Bluetooth speaker. You could plug in your phone via the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It can read audio files off of a USB drive, or you can even use an optical input where the unit can then create a virtual 5.1 surround environment. All of this is also controllable via the included remote. So you could theoretically leave all five sources connected and just swap between them using this thing. And of course, what would a product be in 2018 without some RGB? There are 49 programmable LEDs tucked away underneath the front lip of the Katana, which fire down onto your desk. This makes for some really attractive ambient underglow, and it's not at all as distracting as I thought it might be. You can change the colors, patterns, and brightness, or as with the majority of RGB effects, just turn it off if it bugs you. So the bottom line on the Sound Blaster X Katana is that it's an overall very attractive package that likely puts out way more sound than you actually need, even if that sound is a bit narrow. It sits nicely under your monitor and gives you back that workspace real estate that you may have been missing if you're using something like satellite speakers that sat on the desk. The separate subwoofer is small and easy to hide away, and the RGB effects underneath the soundbar are a nice, unoffensive value add. I do wish that there was a similar product that focused a little more on sound quality than sound quantity, as I would love to be able to ditch my headphones while editing. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case just yet, but for an immersive gaming experience, it might be hard to beat the Katana's overall cool factor. So what do you guys think of the Sound Blaster X Katana? Are you searching for a new PC audio solution? And if so, would you consider it? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. And if you wanna support BPS Customs directly, check out some links down in the description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you next time.